Hey, it's syllabus day. Today I'm going to show you how to adjust your syllabus and your Canvas page to fit standards-based grading. Let's get started. I always hated syllabus day. I hated the first week of class having to listen to five to seven different syllabi being read to me. I hated as a professor giving out a syllabus. I used to make my syllabi one page just to get everything out of the way. Um, let's just get into the material. That's what I wanted to do. Um, but standards-based grading made me rethink the need of a syllabus. I don't need to tell you how to write a syllabus. I'm sure you have a lot of ideas that I could borrow. But I just want to share a few things that have made my syllabi more relevant to standard-based grading. I also want to remind you that this is part of a series covering standards-based grading. In the other videos, you can find my motivation and how I set up a course, how I set up a gradebook, and I hope you can find those materials useful. I also have links in the description to a lot of other materials for standard-based grading. There's a lot of stuff out there today. I'm just going to point out a few things in my syllabus that I feel like are helpful for standards-based grading. I'm also going to provide a link to an example syllabus that you can pull whatever you need from for your syllabus as well. And I'm not going to go through all of this. This is not actually syllabus day. But a few things I want to point out. All right, so I'm going to start here um, in my syllabus. How do I get a grade? Um, I want to make sure that students understand what standard-based grading is. And I think you'll find a big part of converting to standards-based grading is just learning how to communicate the goal to your students. So I borrowed some of this language from a repository of syllabi that you can find in the description of this video. Um, basically, I just point out a few things, and I do read this in, in class on the first day, that we use standards-based grading, which is a system you may not be used to. Um, the two things I like to point out is there's no partial credit, and that anything that is incorrect can be reattempted. I try to point out the benefits of this system, show, showing that a system like this is designed to help reduce their stress level where they're not being judged by their performance in just one day, but, but their accomplishments throughout the semester. In particular, I think what's very important here is to list, as you can see I have in bold, my learning targets and my grading categories. So for example, this is my discrete math course. So I have six A targets, which I say are proof techniques, and so on. My B targets are calculations, C targets are my complementary targets, I have five definitions targets, and then we talk about homework and the final exam. And I put in an example of a rubric. So for assignments, most assignments are going to have just a check, an X, or a check minus. The check minus is like there's a small error that could be easily fixed. Um, if they can point it out to me when I hand it back to them, I'll upgrade it to a check. If they can't, then we'll just try again, which does happen sometimes. I also include for my A targets, which are my proof writing assignments that, um, you know, it's not just check or X. There's a little bit more nuance to that. So I put in the grading rubric here in the syllabus so they understand that as well. And I, I feel like I have beefed up my syllabus now to 1,704 words, which is way more than what I used to, because I want to communicate as much as I can about the purpose and the functionality of what our course is like. So especially the first time going through a standard-based grading course, students get confused about, I can retake assignments. And um, I point out in the syllabus, yes, we call these reassessments. And you can take reassessments. Um, most of the time, the reassessments will be outside of class. So I specify in my syllabus my boundaries on, in which it is safe to have reassessments. And I think that's very important for you to put in your syllabus as a protection for you and for just clarity for them. I, tell, uh, I told them this past semester on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, you can take a quiz in my office, um, but you, you need to make the request the day before. I tell them, you know, these quizzes don't just come out of thin air. I actually have to write something, so you need to let me know. And the new score will be recorded as the last attempt. I also recently added this bold sentence here. Each requested quiz must be a unique target. So I, I had some students coming in, they crammed real hard for a certain thing, and they wanted two of those targets back to back, and then they're done. And I realized uh, they're kind of gaming the system again, right? So you cannot take two of the same target at the same time. So we also use tokens in my class, and I point that out in the syllabus. And the way that works is everybody starts out with two tokens. Everybody gets to take one free reassessment a week, and then they can use a token for additional reassessments if they would like. They can earn tokens by doing um, things that I like. For example, if they turn their homework on time, I give them a token for that. 
Um, you may not want to do it that way, but I like to do that. If we have seminars where we have visiting speakers or we have some sort of service project or if we're going on a field trip or something like that and they want to go, I'll give them tokens for doing those kind of things as well because it reinforces the community of our department, which we're, I'm a big believer in. So whatever you dream up for your grade system, just make sure that it's clarified in the syllabus so they know what's going on. I also dedicate a very large portion of my syllabus to calculating their grade. So this section is, so what is my grade? And I have a table like this in every one of my syllabi for each one of my courses. And it just shows them how they can earn a specific letter grade based on the different categories of, of uh, targets that we have in our course. For example, for my discrete math course, to get an A in the A targets category, you have to show mastery of six out of six of those, 100%. For B targets, you only need 14 out of 16 to get the A. And then you can see that rest of information there as well. I want to point out that in the homework, I only say 75% of the homework. And that's because um, this is homework checked off. So when they submit a homework assignment to me, if it's incomplete or if it has errors in it, I'll give it an X. I'll write, I'll annotate what needs to be fixed, give it back to them. And then they can resubmit um, with the corrections. And if the corrections are acceptable, I'll give them a check. So to get an A in the course, they have to have 75% of the homework actually checked off. So that, that means 75% of the homework actually worked out correctly. Um, that's a harder target to hit than it looks like at the beginning of the semester. And my diligent students really take on this challenge. And so that's part of the reason I like standards-based grading is it does reward hard work. And I've had some students that struggled initially, but because they kept coming back and kept working at it and kept being motivated to work because of the system, they ended up doing very well, not just with the grade, but actually understanding what they're doing. I also point out in my syllabus that with these grades, they're, each one of these categories are weighted and it'll be calculated with the GPA scale. So I'll scroll down for a second because I'll show you here that I have an example grade report. Um, at the end of the semester, someone's grade report may look like this. And these are these scores are the number of checks that they got on these different targets. These are the number of temps here. And it's all tallied out for them. And I do email grade reports like this to them. If you want to see how I do that, I have a video in this series that covers this in detail. The link's down below. And then I walk them through at the beginning, like what the student's actual grade would be. So this is like just an example. So this particular student had a B in the A targets, a D in the B targets, a B in the C targets, a B in the, on the D targets, etc. And with their weights, we can calculate what their grade would actually be. And we convert all those letters to a number through the GPA scale. I calculate it and they get a 2.75, which would be a B minus. And that conversion is listed here in the GPA scale in the syllabus. I also mentioned details about the final exam. And if I have a date for it already, I try to put that in here as well. I go through our complementary targets, which are more project-based, and show them what kind of point values each one of those will be worth based on the rubric attached to each one of those that we put in Canvas. And then I finish up my syllabus by listing out all the targets like a catalog. And I like to put where in the textbooks they can find these particular targets. So my discrete math course, we actually use two books. We use the Book of Proof by Richard Hammack. And we use long form proofs by Jay Cummings. And so I show for each one of these targets where they can reference those in the textbooks. All right, I'm gonna point out one other thing. I, this is from my college algebra uh, syllabus that um, the targets in that textbook don't line exactly just by the sections. So what I do in that case is I have two tables. One here I have the targets with the appropriate uh, textbook sections attached to those targets so they can know where to find each one of the targets. But then I also show another table where we have the textbook sections and they can see which targets are associated with each textbook section. I have two additional resources that I think my students find very helpful that I hand out with the syllabus on day one. Let me show you those real quick. The first one is just a blank grade sheet. I hand this out printed on paper and I tell them to keep up with it and they can just keep track of what they've checked and how many checks they have to help them kind of give an estimate of on um, where they stand in the course. I also look, it has a, a table of the homework assignments of what they've submitted and what they've completed and a remembrance again on how to get their grade and they can put in their current 
grade to give a mock estimate of where they stand in the course. Some students hang on to this very tightly just to keep checking and penciling it. And I do encourage pencil so they can erase uh, where they are and what they need and they keep up with it that way. The second thing I hand out at the beginning of the class is the what I call the exam one checklist or sometimes I call it the early checklist. And this is just a, a list of things that they should do before we have our first exam or before the first you know, early part of the semester. And look, this is just easy stuff. Um, the Read the syllabus, okay? We're doing that in class. Uh, join the discrete team. So we use Microsoft Teams a lot. Purchase the textbooks. Purchase or download the Book of Proof book, which we use in that class. Review the list of competencies and understand the standards-based grading system. So if a student can do all this stuff, check this off and hand it back to me before the first exam, I'll give them one point towards their complimentary grade. It's an easy thing to do, but it's an onboarding process to help students get started with the course quickly. It's amazing how many students never bother to actually gather the resources that they need. It's just a clear list of resources showing them exactly what they do need. Now quickly, as far as Microsoft Teams, um, at Bellhaven we each have a Microsoft account. So Microsoft Teams is a great way to communicate. I use Teams in most of my courses. It's a great way to let them know about upcoming quizzes or guest speakers, those kind of things. If we need to cancel class for whatever reason, that's a good way to do it. People post pictures and memes and sometimes they jaw back and forth at each other in a fun way. It's a great way to host community in the class, and I'm very glad that I use it. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit. Now I want to talk about Canvas. I think I found a pretty decent way to convert the Canvas gradebook to fit what I'm trying to do with standards-based grading. So I want to show you how, how I do this. Okay, so this is my discrete math course um, in Canvas. I want to point out that Canvas does now have a standards-based grading book. I do not use it personally um, because it doesn't fit some of the things I'm trying to do very well, but it may fit your system very well. So I encourage you to look into it and I might reevaluate my opinion on that later on as well. But let me show you what I do currently. Okay, so this is my course homepage and the different modules I have here are the syllabi and information, homework, and then one module for each one of my listed targets, the A, B, C, D in this particular class. In Calculus 2, it's just uh, the B and C targets, and it varies from course to course. But here, you can see if I expand one of my target modules, uh, they're all listed out here. And if I click on one, for example, A2 is proof of sets. I specify um, where they can learn about proofs with sets from their textbooks. For some courses, I have uh, YouTube videos covering that material. If I have that available, I will put that in here as well. Um, I don't have that yet for proofs with sets, but they, they can find all their targets listed here. And for the C targets in particular, since they are more rubric based, I do have different point values associated with them based on what that assignment is. And I set point values to each one of my other targets based on how many checks they need to show mastery on that assignment. Okay, so now my one warning with Canvas, so I have my targets listed as two points. But let's say a student on the first day gets their N1 quiz correct, and so that goes in as a one, because it has a one check. Canvas loves percentages, it turns that into a 50%, which is an F. So I have gotten um, emails from students, I've gotten a few calls from parents, um, a few concerned coaches and academic advisors, those kind of things, wondering about what's going on, why the student who usually does well has an F, and I have to tell them, look, just, it's okay, it doesn't mean they made an F on that assignment. What it means is that they're 50% of the way. So the percentage that shows up in Canvas is actually the percentage of completion, not an actual grade. So I do have a workaround around that where I think I can calculate their grade correctly. And so that's what I want to show you how to do. So if I go to my Assignments tab, I want to point out in Assignments I have the same modules. These are my different grade categories, A, B, C, D targets. I have the homework assignments. And notice that each one of these have 0% weight to the total. All right, but if I scroll down, I have some other stuff here. I have the A target grade, B target grade, etc., the one check grade, the final exam grade. So these are the actual grade categories listed in the syllabus. They'll actually calculate their grade. And look, I have each one of them worth four points. Four points because we're gonna use a GPA scale to grade these. 
All right, I can also adjust the weight categories. Right now I have 0% for all of these because I wanted to show you how to put them in. In the top right, you see there's a little three dots and I can go to assignment group weights. And so I want my A targets down to homework assignments. I want all those to be 0%. So it doesn't matter if they got that 50% on the N1 quiz, their actual weight of that group of assignments will be zero. I'm handling all that in Excel. And then when I load in their actual A target, B target grade, that will be weighted appropriately down here. And I follow that based on what's in my syllabus. So referring back to my syllabus, in discrete math, I said your final grade, the A targets are 25%, the B targets are 20%. So I can go here and add that in. That's 25% for the A's, 20% 20 for the B's, and so on. Just filling it in according to my syllabus. 15% for C's, 5 for D's, 20% for the homework grade, 5 for the one check grade, 10 for the final exam. And so I can save it. And so now those grade categories have the appropriate weights. So the only grades I'm actually putting in that affect their grade projection in Canvas are not any of these up here, even though I do include those for their reporting so they know what they've done and what they haven't. So the real grades though come from this A target grade, B target grade, all the way down to the final exam grade, each worth four points based on a GPA scale. Okay, now there is one problem to this, and that is that if they have a B in a category that translates to a three, a three is 75% of the four points total they can earn. So in a traditional setting, a 75% is usually a C, right? Here, if they score a C, that's two points, that's 50%, that's an F in a traditional scale. So if I just leave things as they are in Canvas, then even though I've put in the grades the way I want them to, they'll still be scaled incorrectly. So to fix that problem, I can adjust my grade scaling in Canvas. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this in a blank Canvas shell that the University, Bellhaven University let me use to display this and to kind of test around some ideas. So if you scroll all the way down on the left-hand side down to settings, these course details pull up and uh, there's a lot of useful things in here. The only thing I really want to point out though is if I scroll down to grading scheme and you would almost overlook it if you weren't careful, you can view grading scheme. So this is the default at Bellhaven where I have 193% an A. And so this is exactly what I'm talking about. If I put in a B, which is a 75%, 75% is categorized as a C in Canvas. However, if I go to Manage Grade Schemes, I can now add in my own grade scheme. So I can call this GPA Scale. And now I can adjust what I want an A to be really is anything from uh, above a 3.7 to a 4. So in terms of percentage, that's a 92.5% up to 100%. So I can just put in 92.5% there. And you can notice here at the A minus side, that will readjust. And so I just go down and fill those out appropriately according to uh, these divisions. Okay, so you can see I have filled out all those weights. And typically, like for example, I don't really care for a, a C plus. I feel like if you get a C plus, I'm gonna go ahead and bump them up a little bit. Be sure to label your grading scheme, and then you can hit save. Once you save it, you'll be able to enable that grading scheme throughout any of your courses. So for example, this is my discrete math class. As I scroll down to the grading scheme, and I view grading scheme, it has GPA grading. So now when I load in my students B as a 75%, it will actually code as a B again. All right, now to put this information in, and this is why I don't really use the standard based grading um, grade book that Canvas provides is because I have a lot of quizzes. Some students come by, let's take N1 for example, some students may get it first on the quiz in class and then on the exam and they're done. But I have some students who need that third try, the fourth try, the fifth try, sometimes a sixth try before they get that second check. So through the Canvas standard based grading grade book, I would have to load in each one of those quizzes as a separate assignment. 
And then the next semester, you know, it might be a different number of quizzes that I need. And so I can't really copy a lot of stuff over. But if I use the ledger system um, and the details are provided uh, on that in my last video, you can find that below in the description. I don't have to worry about all of that. I can just load up the results of the pivot table into each of these and it'll fill it out appropriately. And then also their letter grades will be filled in appropriately here in the assignments tab where I have A target grade, B target grade, etc. I can show you what this looks like. Okay, now to actually load in my grades, what I do is I go to the grades tab, I hit export, and I export the entire grade book. Your computer will download a CSV file. When you open up the CSV file, it'll look something like this, and it has all the grades for all the different targets, all the different homework assignments, and all the way over I can find my A target grade, my B target grade, etc. So then I open up my grade book in my ledger. I can copy in all the A targets, the C targets, etc. Just paste them into the other document. I can copy all the homework, paste it into the other document. In this bottom section, and again, I covered this information in the other video, but I can get the GPA scale grades for the A targets, B targets, etc. Right here, I just copy that in and paste it into my CSV file. I save. And then on Canvas, I can just import, choose file, and then just upload data. So once you do that, you'll now have fully upgraded your gradebook and you'll avoid freak out moments like I've gotten in the past because their grades will be appropriately distributed, appropriately codified, and appropriately weighted. Okay, so this is a lot of information. Hopefully it's helpful. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be glad to help. There's a lot of resources linked down below, including documents on, I provided example syllabi and some other things. If you have any questions on any of that, please let me know. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching.